We will be in Matthew chapter 27 this morning. I'm going to read a little later in the chapter. It's a long chapter. I'm just going to read uh, two verses. I'm going to read verse 50 and 51. So Matthew chapter 27. And when you find your place, if you're able to and if, and if you're willing to, uh, we would. I would ask you to rise simply for the reading of the Word of God, uh, just for respect to the Word. Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 and 51. And we're at the time of the crucifixion of our Lord. And here at verse 50, Scriptures read, Jesus, when He had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. You may be seated. I just want to deal this morning with a simple statement that the rocks rent. Uh, it seems like a very... Uh, short statement, as a matter of fact, I've read past it, I don't know how many times, in reading my Bible, I'm uh, concentrating usually in this part uh, on the Lord, because He's going through His great passion. He's come to that point where we preached up a few weeks ago, where He said it is finished, and now it says He gave up the ghost, and that means that He has voluntarily laid down His life. We've come to the conclusion of, of the uh, crucifixion and the death uh, of our Lord. And it's, <clears throat> it's a, a moving account and it's one that grips the children of God as we read and see what He did for us. And in the midst of uh, this, there's so many little details uh, that they'll slip right past us. And this one has slipped past me many times. It says, the rocks rent. But there's nothing in all of Scriptures that's there just... Uh, as commentary that's there for no purpose. This, all of it is written. It's for, written for doctrine, for reproof. It's written to, uh, to help each and every one of us to edify us, build us up in the ways of God. And so I would preach this morning about the rocks rent. Now this speaks, of course, uh, on its face to the physical rocks. If you want to have fun, go look up how many rocks are on the face of this earth. There's no answer to that. Because it, it depends on what you mean. Do you mean the little rocks? Do you mean the big rocks? Do you count grains of sand? What are you counting as a rock? There's, uh, and besides that, there's so many rocks that there's no real good way to get an estimate. You could say billions, trillions. And besides, how deep are we going? Are we going six feet deep in the earth? Because really, the whole earth is a rock, is it not? Yeah. And, and so, what does it mean the rocks rent? Well, I know this much even from science classes in times past, and I did go look and confirm it and, and make sure I wasn't remembering wrong. But every rock on the face of this earth has a crack in it. Yep. Every rock on the face of this earth. If you go to the jewelry store, and they will sell you what's called a flawless diamond. Uh, all that means is you can't see the flaws with your naked eye or beyond a certain uh, ampl uh, a certain uh, amplification. I've got the wrong word there, but you know what I mean. But if you have magnification, if you have a stronger magnifying glass or microscope, you can see that it does have flaws. There's really no such thing as a flawless diamond or a flawless jewel. I hate to disappoint you, but there are none. Uh, every rock on the face of this earth has a crack. Why? Because the rocks rent. Uh, and that's why, and if you go to your uh, science book, it may try to explain it away a different way. And I know that different rocks crack different ways, but in, in reality, they all have a crack because the rocks rent. Uh, because at the time where our Lord was crucified, it was a great travail. It was a travail in the heavens and the earth. So much so, that the rocks rent. That does include the physical rocks. Every rock on the face of this earth was torn when our Savior laid down His life because of the great travail in the heavens yep. and in the earth. Everything was broken. The very earth itself was rent because as we just said, the earth itself is a rock. And the very earth itself was torn and rent, and we see it even in the next uh, verse. It says the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose 
He came out of the graves after his resurrection. That's three days later. But why were they able to come out? Because the rocks rent. Why would the whole earth be torn? Why would the whole earth be, be broken over the crucifixion of our Lord? But because this whole earth was cursed when man fell into sin. And now this whole earth was in travail and remained in travail until the completion of our salvation on the day in which our Lord returns. But great was the travail over the whole earth. Every rock was rent. And the earth itself was torn. We read of the earthquakes which took place on this day. Oh, it was a great day indeed. And the rocks rent. But now let me speak of another rock. Because this goes beyond <clears throat> the rocks on the face of this earth. It goes into the rock of all rocks. It goes into the rock on which we are built. For we're not built on a physical rock of, of Mount Zion, a, a mountain of, on the hills of Judea. But we're built on the rock which is our Lord. We're built on the rock which is Jesus Christ. And his body was rent, was torn. It speaks of the veil of his flesh in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews. And here uh, we just read in verse 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And that speaks of the tearing of the body of Jesus Christ, opening up the way into the holy of holies, where before we were blocked and could not go into that into that holy place. And neither could the nation of Israel. And, and neither could the Gentiles. But when his body was torn, and the veil was torn, his body was torn that day. That great rock who is our Savior was torn that day when the rocks rent. You think of the power that it would take to tear apart our Savior. For he did this voluntarily, laid down his life. It was more than you and I had given our life. For he was not only 100% man, but 100% God. And it said that he poured out his soul a sacrifice. That's right. His soul. Oh yes, the rock. The rock of all rocks was rent that day. Torn for you and I. So that no man could recognize him. It says his visage that means his appearance was marred more than any man. And I know I preach this often about, about his sacrificial death, but I can't get away from it. It's the center point of the whole Bible. All of the scriptures are built around this one event, this one day, when the rock was rent, when he was torn, that body that he was given, that was prepared for him, that began that day with the work of the Spirit through, through a, a young virgin by the name of Mary, when the Spirit overshadowed her, and she conceived inside her from the Spirit this body and this person of Jesus Christ. Born for this purpose that this day his whole body would be torn and his soul torn. That rock, not just the body the rock was in, that rock was rent on that day. Torn for you and I. But you know as Christ himself was torn. There are some things that happened from this. That we still wonder at. And are still amazed at. Pardon me. For all throughout the scriptures up to this point. <clears throat> there were little pictures. And little types of Christ. And, and we see in the rest of the Old Testament. How, especially Paul, but even, even others, would look back into the scriptures and see pictures of Christ. And why didn't they see them before? They never did. Why was it that all the prophets prophesied knowing, even not, knowing not even what they had looked into? Because all of these little rocks, if you will, these little pictures of Christ were whole until the day the rocks were rent. And on that day, all of those little pictures and types of Christ were opened up and began to open up. And the things that could never be understood of Christ could now be understood. And so for the rest of the New Testament, we constantly see pictures and types 
of Christ brought out which were never brought out before. Why? Because on that day, the rocks rent. And the little rocks, the little pictures of our great rock were torn open so it might be revealed to us who he is. And so we read in Hebrews about the rock that followed the children of Israel throughout the wilderness and says, that rock is Christ. Why didn't they know it earlier? Why couldn't they understand? Because the rock wasn't rent, but on that day it was rent and torn open. And we can see now in the Old Testament all these pictures of Christ and they're open to us because they were rent. They were torn open and shown to us. And now we can read in the scriptures and we can see the beauty of Christ all throughout the Old Testament. Things that the children of Israel could never see because they were not open to them yet. They're now open for us. And we read of this rock in the wilderness that poured forth water. And we understand that's Christ. That's the living water that comes out of Him that follows us, that says, I will be with you always, that travels around with us in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Right. How do we know it? Because the rocks were rent. We can see it now. We can see the children of Israel coming across the Red Sea and escaping from the children of Egypt and saying, that was me the day I was born again when I was removed from the land of Egypt. That's the world that I was living in and I was redeemed and brought out and it's dead to me now. How do we know that? Because the rocks were rent. Yep. Because all the things of the Old Testament were opened up to us. And in the book of Psalms, now, when we read in Psalms 22, and we see, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now we say, that's Christ. David was prophesying of Christ, but they didn't know it then because the rocks were closed up. But now on this day, when our great rock was rent, these rocks were rent. And we can see all through the Old Testament that the Psalms prophesied of Christ. Yes, man. We read in Proverbs and we see this morning as we were going through Proverbs in men's Sunday school class, pardon me. We came upon a scripture. Uh, I, I want to bring this out to you. I wasn't going here, but I will. Came upon a scripture in the book of Proverbs in chapter 19 <clears throat> that said in verse 13, a foolish son is a calamity of his father and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Now when you read that, with your natural eyes, our natural mind, the natural man says that that's all about family problems. Well, it is. <clears throat> but now that this rock is rent, we can see, seeing how the Scriptures speak of Christ, that that speaks of His family problems. And that speaks of how sons of God uh, who are foolish are a calamity unto God. And, it's, and this, this wife that he's speaking of here, who's the wife? Who's the bride of Christ? The church. It's not speaking of one woman. It's speaking of the church. And how that a contentious church, how that a grumbling, complaining church is, is an irritant to our Father. And the irritant to Christ. How do we know that? Because the rock was rent open. Yeah. And we read in here beyond the natural and the spiritual is open because the rocks were rent. Yeah. You see, those children of Israel, all of those years, they had the Word of God in front of them, but they read it and didn't read it. They read it and saw only the law. They read it and all they got out of it was do and don't and do and don't because the rocks were still closed. But when they were rent open that day, now we understand it's not just a history book. It's not just a, a chronology of battles. It's not just a genealogy. It's not just a, a history of the law. But it's all about Christ. All about Christ. And everything is about the salvation of Christ. And about, about His great passion. It's all about Christ. And we know it because the rocks were rent. Amen. I want to move on. I'll be short this morning. But I want to go to one last thing. Because I said Christ Himself was rent. Was torn. 
And he was. But it goes beyond his body being beaten. It goes beyond <clears throat> the spear tip which went into his side and opened up a pathway into his heart and poured out blood and water. As important as that is, I'm telling you that the way into Jesus Christ was torn open. In the book of Exodus, if you will, <clears throat> in the book of Exodus, in chapter 33, uh, uh, if you want to turn there, I'll give you a moment to do so. In the book of Exodus, chapter 33, Moses here was speaking to God. And actually, I should say that the Lord spoke to Moses. For I see in verse 11, the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Now listen, that doesn't happen to everybody. Everybody's not a friend of God. But the children of God are friends of God. Amen. And it says in verse 14, uh, he says, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Doesn't that sound familiar? Sounds like the Lord Jesus Christ talking to us. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy labor, and I will give thee rest. Amen. Verse 17, And the Lord said unto Moses, I'll do the same also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Boy, it sounds like him talking to me, because he knows me by name. Amen. But let's look at this thing that Moses wished for so much. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. I'm going to tell you, every child of God wants to see the glory of God. It's a burning desire. It's something I yearn for, to see the glory of God. When I walk into a church service, when I walk into a revival, when I walk into a camp meeting, when I walk by myself to a place where I can pray to God, I want to see, yearn to see the glory of God. Don't you want to see Amen. the glory of God? Amen. Amen. That's why we want so much to see a sinner come and be saved. That's why we desire to praise the Lord. We want to see the glory of God. And he said, that's the Lord speaking, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. You know, the Jews couldn't understand this. How God just told him he couldn't see him and live, and yet he showed him to him. Can I tell you that the face of God toward man is Jesus Christ. And even in the New Testament we're told that no man's seen God the Father. But we're told that we've seen Him through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And you see, even that visage of, <clears throat> vision of God was opened up to us when we saw Jesus opened up to us as very God on the cross. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. I wish I had the voice to shout. I'm telling you, there's a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And we know that rock's Christ. Yes. And Moses stood on a rock, but oh, it goes deeper than that. And it shall come to pass that when my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cloud of the rock. For Moses didn't just stand on a rock, hear me. But when his glory came by, Moses got in the cleft of a rock. Yes. And when the glory of God was accomplished on that cross, when Jesus gave up the ghost, and when the rocks were rent, there was now a cleft in the rock. And we don't just stand on the rock, but we stand in the rock. Amen. Amen. For we don't get to, uh, to the to the God our Father in our prayers by being on Jesus Christ, but by being in Him Amen. and the way in Him happened when the rock was rent. Amen. Amen. Hey, when that day when the rock of Christ was cleft for you and I, yes. we can get in now. Amen. Amen. We can get in Christ. We don't stand on the promise of a Christ to come. But he's already come. And we can get in the cleft of the rock. Amen. Amen. Rock of ages. 
Cliff for me, it's already Cliff for me. It's already Cliff for you on that day. When the rocks rent, the way, the way was cleft and put open for us. That's how you and I get in, you know. Amen. Because the rock rent. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The rock rent for me that day. Let me get in Christ. Amen. Why is it that God can look at me and not see my sins? Because I'm in Christ and He sees Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. How is it that I can live who deserve to die? Because the blood that covers me uh, that is the blood of Christ. Yes. Not my own blood. I couldn't pay for my own sins. Oh, there's groups that believe that. The Mormon church says that there's sins that you have to pay for by your own blood. I got news for them. You can't do it. You ain't got enough blood. You ain't got enough blood to pay for your own sins. You can't do it. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And on that day, when he shed his blood, the rock was rent. And the way to heaven was opened up. And the way to be restored to God, my maker, your maker, was restored. The pathway was opened up. The rock was rent. Amen. Amen. And all we must do Amen. is get in the cleft of the rock. He said, I'll cover thee with my hand when I pass by. And when I take away my hand, thou shalt see my back part. But Moses couldn't see his face. Moses got to see everything God did in the past. But we now, seeing this rock cleft, can see everything He does now in the present and what He'll do in the future. We see it all because the rocks were rent and opened to us. Amen. Brother Craig, if you have a song, if you'll come up, I think I'm done with everything. I